So after starting off and priming it with a nice gray primer and or white, you want something white for the base where you're going to be putting your, uh, your first layer of paint, which is going to be a full grim pink. This full grim pink is really watered down almost, it seems, a little lighter, so you got to put it on really thick and let it dry. I did about two coats here. Um, I did speed up the video a bit just to make it a bit more interesting to watch. Um, but this layer you can be super messy with. Don't worry about getting it within the lines. Remember, these are death guards. They're ridden with disease. That's the best part about the army, after all. But with this layer, you want to be thorough. You want to make sure that you get it every bit of gray. And then I also leave a bit of the gray showing through, just to make it look like muscles are tense and there are a bit more dimensions in each of the colors. And I'll be adding on to this base layer as we go. It's a really nice layer paint. All right, and then I use my little homemade stand here, and we move on to the next layer of paint, which is going to be our um, horror pink, which I really like. It's a really nice color. Um, I use it for the tentacles and for some of the more spotty places. Um, I use a lot of it in the stomach region, and then whenever it gets almost to where it's a dry, I like to kind of just take it over any of the buffy ridges and get to where it looks like it's festering almost. And once again, you don't have to be very clean with this layer. I usually go back around and make sure that all my edges are clean and anything that might overlap. But poxwalkers aren't your main focus on the army, so I'm not super worried about getting it on anything or moving it. But it's a really, really nice color. And I personally think it's, after you get shaded, a really grim looking color with how gross it can look on some of your figures. Um, like at the end of this, you'll see how the tentacles come out a lot darker and a little bit more organic looking. I think it's very, very nice. And then I, it is another layer of paint, so you can do that as many times as you like. But then I move to a changeling pink, which is actually a dry. Um, before applying this, I, uh, I put one little glob on first, and I apply it heavily to any places that have too much of the uh, horror paint, to where it looks almost unnatural and not like a skin tone. And then uh, I do, if you see there, I take it and uh, re-wipe it off. Now I'm applying Iron Belcher, or Lead Belcher, which you need for the arm on this specific figure. And I think it came out really nice with how, uh, how many coats you do. Just do a couple of coats and it should have no problem. I'm now touching up um, some of the more pinks and some of the skin tone here. Like I said, you can go over as many times as you want. Um, I'm a little weird with how I do it. I like to go back and over, back and over, back and over again. But you'll see me a couple times in this video uh, go from painting like silvers to a flesh tone. And yes, I know that there are better ways to do it, but you know. And that was the lead belcher. Now we're going to start painting the bone. I had to focus the camera here. Um, it, I bought the original painting set for this, and it gives you a, um, more flesh tone. It's a rock art flesh, I believe is how it's pronounced. Um, I don't like it. <laughs> Not for the bones, at least. I use it for, um, some of the skin tones, but this is my unshield bone, which I really do like. After it gets a little bit of a shader on it, it looks really good. You can add it to any part of the body, and it kind of blends in with that natural body tone. It makes it look, like I said, more organic. It gives it a little bit of color. And then here's the actual flesh tone that it gives you. I use this as a base for all of my cloth. And sometimes I'll use it as a base for like bone protrusions, horns. And then I'll cover that with another brighter white, which gives it even more transparency and a little bit more um, dimension to how the horn looks in the final product. Now this I'm using, it, like I said, as a base tone. Uh, I'm getting all the little nooks and crannies, uh, making sure that I hit every piece of cloth that is on him. Uh, unfortunately, I did go over the little... Uh, I didn't notice until the end of the video that I went over my uh, lead belcher little pendant that he has that I had to paint. But now I'm taking the smallest bit of uh, Rhinox hide, which is a very deep dark brown. I am dry brushing it 
onto the sides and all the saddlebags and all that little extra detail stuff. You don't have to do this. This is just something I like to do. Now, this is my favorite shader. Um, reason being is because it always gives me a nice, really nice product at the end of it. It just, it just seems to seep in so well. I've tried a couple prior or a couple different shadows. I really, really, really like this. It makes a really good contrast to all the colors, and it really overall darkens the colors. I don't really like to worry about too many highlights because not a lot of my dudes have um, any armor that would be shining or anything of the sort. So I like to make it look really muddy, gross, uh, but I want to keep as much detail in that muddiness as I can, and this is just perfect for getting details out. I've started considering um, painting all or pre-painting all of my figures after priming them with this shader, and if you do it with this shader, then it should work out just fine. Now I'm doing some of the texture paint at the bottom. Uh, I don't know how I feel about this texture. It works. It's okay. It's not a bad texture. Um... But it does look like mud. That's the best way to describe it. Um, I really, really do enjoy the contrast it does give with the death card. But with the poxwalkers, it does look a little weird. Um, a one way to counteract this, uh, this kind of all together look is if you take some of your shader and after it's dry, of course, dab some down around the thing to make more of a shadow and maybe some more gross, muddy areas. I'm using a sharpie in this end part to uh, give it a little sheen around it, make it a lot darker because whenever you prime it, it turns gray, and I think it just gives it a way better, more altogether look. If you do, this is just an extra step. You don't have to do this, but I I like including this on it. And now I'm doing a bit of the finishing touches here, and perfect. Doing a couple more shading touches. And here's our fighter product, guys. Nice. So that's the video. Uh, I guess I I think it came out pretty good. Um, right now I'm running Death Guard, so Poxwalkers are something I haven't really seen people badgering home how how we should paint them. So I just kind of went into it blind, and I think it came out fine. Uh, it does look muddy whenever you put that much shading on it, but you wait for it to dry. It usually looks a lot better. Um, but you're allowed to be super messy with these. I think it's super fun. Uh, I tried a bunch of different angles. I have no idea how I'm supposed to film this. I tried a bunch of different ways to show off the paints. I know I'm going to do a voiceover with some music probably as the thing, but I won't know until I get there. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, leave a comment if you liked any particular way that I either had the camera be placed or if I had it... Um, or if you like the pictures in between where it had it next to the thing in its phases of getting painted. But I figured I might as well do both for this video. So, yeah, hit me the subscribe and a like. That'd be awesome, guys. Um, let's see how far we can get this channel to go. Peace. Now I go up here and do this.